I just wanted to share with you quickly um, a dream that I had this morning. Um, I was speaking to a, a few believers regarding what was happening in the world, and um, uh, one of them seemed very, um, I guess, concerned or worried about what was happening. And um, and he, he mentioned in the dream, he mentioned that he had a dream where for some reason he kept saying, he kept seeing uh, the phrase 50-50, 50-50. And, and then I mentioned to him, well, yeah, well, last Sunday uh, I was at a church service where they mentioned um, uh, 50, that someone else was having also dreams about 50-50. So then I, I explained to him what fifty fifty meant. I meant once you start, and I said once you start seeing the phrase uh, fifty fifty, that means the uh, the persecution of the church would start soon after that. All right. So I just wanted to share that dream with you. All right. Bye. Millions of Americans are heading back to the polls today for two crucial elections in the state of Georgia. Because no candidate won more than 50% of the vote last year, Republicans and Democrats are facing off in runoff races for the state's two Senate seats. The results are critically important for the early years of the Biden administration, with today's outcome determining if the Democrats can control both the House and the Senate. As it stands in the Senate, Republicans control 50 seats and the Democrats Democrats 48. Republicans only need to win one of Georgia's two seats to retain its Senate majority. But if the Democrats can win both, the Senate will sit at 50-50 and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris will have the power to cast tie-breaking votes in her administration's favour. And why, Lisa? What are the stakes? Why right. is it so important to both parties? Very close to a race for the White House is this election because it will determine which party controls the Senate. Right now, Democrats need to win both of these seats in order to have a 50-50 tie in the Senate. Because they won the White House, that means uh, Vice President-elect Kamala Harris will be able to break ties once she is inaugurated. So this is, it sounds like, you know, okay, so they control one chamber, what's the big deal? It's a huge deal because if the Senate and House and the White House all are controlled by Democrats, they not only can steer the agenda, but they will be able to pass at least one major piece of legislation through a process called reconciliation. Um, it opens the door for very big changes, including on climate, on diversity issues, on racial issues, on a host of things, on health care. It opens the door possibly for... Uh, and a possible shift in the balance of power could mean for the markets and the economy. We're joined now by Jason Trennert, uh, chairman of Strategus Research Partners. The political will to go way left because of the realization that it's such a, a narrow uh, margin. I mean, it's so, you know, it's 50-50 if, if, if it turns out that way. 50-50 in, uh, in the Senate with uh, the vice president-elect breaking things and, and only four or five seats in the House. Is that what's happening? Joe, I don't, th I don't think it's the latter, uh, to, be, to be quite honest. And I think just some of the early moves in the House, I, I don't think give you, don't give me as a conservative a lot of hope that um, there's going to be a lot of restraint um, if, um, if the Democrats pick up two seats uh, in the Senate. In 2001, uh, George Bush, 43, had almost precisely the same setup. L let's say the Democrats pick up two seats. We had 50-50 in the Senate. Even if it's 50-50, I, yeah, I think there's going to be a strong tendency to kind of go for it, um, uh, especially because there's, there's going to be an element of time, which is that you have two years to get your agenda through before... Even for veterans of Capitol Hill, this has been a day like no other. And with the results in Georgia, which you've just heard about, with both Democrats winning, we want to turn now to two men who have led the Senate for their respective parties during the time, the last time the Senate was split 50-50, and that was in 2001. Trent Lott, Republican from Mississippi, and Tom Daschle, Democrat from South Dakota. Here we are. Well, we had a terrible day. We got a 50-50 Senate. But the country has a lot of needs, a lot of things that need to be done. Uh, are we going to be able to rise to the occasion? Are we going to be able to make a 50-50 Senate work like Tom Daschle and I found a way to do in 2001? That is the big question.
perhaps this could be a, a transformational moment. Maybe people could see this for what it is and recognize that we bottomed out. You can't get much lower than what we saw today. Let's climb out of this hole. Let's try to put some pieces together and make this country work better again. Uh, I think Tom may be right. You know, 9-11 was an awakening event for us. And we got a lot done in the aftermath, in the fall of, of uh, after 9-11. We worked together and, and actually the, the approval of the Senate went up to a historic high because they saw us working together to help our country at a difficult time. Senator Daschle, even if Joe Biden tries to work with Republicans, presumably you're still going to have President Trump out there, the people who support him. Uh, advocating for something else and still insisting the election was stolen. Well, that's right, Judy. I, I, I think they're going to have a, a decision they're going to have to make. Who do they follow? And what, do this, what does the Republican Party look like going forward? It could be the party of a Trent Lott and, uh, you know, a constructive party with conservative values that, that has an important role to play in this country. Or it could be the destructive approach that President Trump has reflected now for four years. That's going to be a choice every Republican has to make. How do we define the party going forward? I, I know a lot of Republican senators still. And I know there are a lot of them that are thinking about that. In fact, I've already had two of them on, uh, today reach out to me and say, how did y'all make the 50-50 Senate uh, work? Send us a memo on that. And I've done that. So at least they're beginning to think that way. And uh, certainly I would be glad to talk to them anytime. See the isotoxyl stars for you, those of y'all that know. Isotoxyl means becoming your own reflection. Like it's edge transitive. If something's edge transitive, like if you, you have a set of twins, they're edge transitive. One becomes the other without changing the space within. So like your host body, you, you, you turn from good to evil. Isotoxyl. You'll see them everywhere now, isotoxin stars. I see them in remodeling now all the time on on buildings that have done remodeling during COVID. Uh, I used to go to a bar called the 50-50. Think about that, 50-50, half and half. And they put isotoxyl stars all over the front door now. Get it? Because the 50 that was good became the 50 that is bad. Yep, that's it.